best stories in sports. This is an E60 feature presentation. It's Monday, April 23rd, three days before the NFL draft, and Robert Griffin III, RG3, is in New York City. The 22-year-old Heisman Trophy winner is preparing for the biggest night of his football life. You are about to get drafted. Do you feel how immediate this is now that you are here in New York? Yeah, I, I try not to get too excited for, for anything other than touchdowns, but it is here. And I might be emotional, I might not be emotional, but I'm going to err on the side that maybe I'll be you know, really, really excited or have a couple tears drop here or there because it's a dream come true. Now, we don't know where you're going to get drafted yet. Let's say all indications <laughs> say that you're going to go to Washington. <laughs> this is a franchise that hasn't an elite quarterback by most people's assessment in about 20 years. What is that like to be in the middle of all of that hunger and excitement from that kind of fan base? I feel like I'm already a part of the Redskins because I'm talking on the behalf of the Redskins, but I'm excited to go there. There's a lot of excitement, but I also know that it's not just excitement for me. Yeah, that they'll, well, they'll get a franchise quarterback or a young quarterback they can develop, uh, but they're excited for that team. You know, great defense, a lot of weapons on offense. Uh, they just need someone they can believe in, and, uh, you know, I'm happy that I can be that guy. Griffin's journey to the NFL draft began more than 10,000 miles away in Okinawa, Japan, when in 1990 he was born on an army base, the son of military parents. When Griffin was three, his family left for the U.S. By the time he was seven, they'd settled near Waco, Texas. Robert Griffin II preached discipline in school and in sports. The father and son spent hours together on the football field after RG3 started playing at age 12. But in 2003, as the United States prepared to invade Iraq, Griffin's father was sent to the Middle East. They woke me up that morning at 4 in the morning and he said, you know, he was leaving and I had to be the man of the house. A 13-year-old kid, uh, he, he left on my birthday. Uh, so that was tough. It was the worst birthday I've ever had. And uh, if he wouldn't have come back, um, I don't know what, what would have happened. It would have shook up our lives for sure. You know, life throws you curveballs sometimes. You've got to know which ones to hit. And, and thank God that he didn't throw that curveball to us. To the family's relief, Griffin's father returned after six months. Griffin would go on to excel both on and off the field, graduating seventh in his high school class and qualifying for the U.S. Olympic track and field trials in 2008 as a hurdler. But his love remained football. And as a coveted dual threat quarterback, he earned several scholarship offers, including from Stanford. Why did you decide not to go there? Um, I decided not to go to Stanford because talent respects talent. And, uh, you know, Coach Harbaugh wanted me to go there very badly, but uh, Andrew Luck was already uh, committed there. And I, I didn't feel that it was in my best interest to go there. And it worked out for everybody. Griffin goes deep. Touchdown, Baylor! So you're at Baylor. Things are going very well. Quarterback for the football team going well. You started as a freshman. And then your sophomore year, what happened? Um, you know, my sophomore year, I tore my ACL on my right knee. When they told me, I cried. My mom and dad were in there. My fiance was in there. And, you know, the look in their eyes is what really got me straight. You know, a couple days, you know, I might have been down and, and out. But uh, after that, I was in rehab every time I got a chance because I didn't want to see that look of hurt in their eyes like, you know, maybe maybe it's over. And your dad helped you with your rehab. What kinds of things did he have you do even though you couldn't move around on your feet? My dad wanted me throwing the football whether it was sitting down in the chair. Um, you know. You take a chair out onto a football field? Yeah, just, you know, just throw the football. And, and, you know, it's hard because there's no footwork involved and things like that, but you can still build your arm. He just made sure, you know, I, I was staying positive so I wouldn't uh, go in the tank. Griffin spent the better part of a year rehabbing, but the effort paid off, as over the next two seasons, he emerged as a national star. Last year, he notched nearly 4,300 yards and 37 touchdowns passing, and nearly 700 yards and 10 touchdowns rushing. By December, he and Luck were in New York for the Heisman Trophy presentation. The 2011 winner of the Heisman Trophy is Robert Griffin III, RG3! 
You know, this moment right here, it's, uh, it's unbelievably believable. You're here in New York. You win the Heisman Trophy. Wild, crazy night of partying with your friends afterward? <laughs> no, not a wild, crazy night. Uh, you know, after that, we came back. You know, I went and worked out. Uh, me and my fiance went and worked out in the, in the workout room because I wanted to stay on. This on is track. the night of the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> yeah, it, it was. Um, what yeah. time were we talking? Uh, pretty late. Um, Give me time. Uh, <laughs> Midnight, one a.m., two a.m. Uh, maybe two, three a.m. Two thirty in the morning. Yeah. After everybody else is celebrating that kind of thing, you went to the gym. Yes, ma'am. Griffin was equally committed to his academics. He finished his undergraduate degree in political science in just three years, and he's currently working toward a master's. This past January, Griffin announced he'd forego his final year of eligibility. And by mid-March, the Redskins had pulled off a colossal trade, giving up three first and one second round picks, all with the goal of acquiring Griffin at number two overall. What did you think when that trade came across the wire? And you knew it was for you. Yeah. What did you think? Um, you know, it was crazy, but it kind of puts you at ease. Uh, it makes you realize that you went out and you did what you planned to do. Everything's going so well leading up to the draft, and then some bad press came out recently, and I want to read this. That a couple unnamed scouts who were critical toward you in the newspaper in Milwaukee. One said that you were, quote, selfish. Another said there's someone that you're someone who plays quarterback by, quote, just running around and winging it, and that you're, quote, Michael Vick, but not as good a thrower. I know the polished answer. <laughs> what was your first gut reaction when you heard that? Uh, you know, you just don't know why people would say things like that. You can't fight that battle. You have to let the people that actually know you fight that battle for you. And, uh, you know, it was good to see that the people in the media, um, you know, shot that down and said that, you know, this is, it's wrong because we know who this kid is, or, or at least we get a glimpse of what he is. And it's just who I am. I try not to put on a front, I try to just be real with people, give real answers, and, uh, you know, just it, keep it that way. After those quotes came out, there were a lot of newspaper columns, some charging that, hey, it's only black quarterbacks who have to go through this kind of thing, who get that kind of scrutiny or that kind of parsing about what they can and can't do. What do you think about that? Uh, that's another battle I can't fight. It, it's just a tough uh, thing to say. Uh, you know, I, I, I've watched Sports Center and I see what people say that, you know, if, if, it's, if they're talking about an African American quarterback or a black quarterback and he's fast, he's a runner. But if it's, uh, uh, you know, any other ethnicity quarterback and he's fast, he's just a good quarterback. And, um, you know, it's just a battle that, that does have to be fought, but I can't fight it alone. So, me voicing my opinion on that, it's not going to be any, to any benefit. So, my job is to go out and be a quarterback and use the, the, the skills that God blessed me with. He blessed me with a lot of speed, you know, a great arm, and, and then being able to manage people. And that's what you have to do at quarterback. So I'll try to use those to the best of my ability. And if some say, hey, he's just a runner or he's just a thrower, you know, it's just their opinion. Everybody's entitled to it. Now, Donovan McNabb recently said that he doesn't think you're a good fit for the Redskins franchise. He thought the egos of the coaching staff would get in the way. He thought you'd be misused and they wouldn't game plan around your strengths. What do you think when you heard all that? Uh, you know, it's, it's fair warning, um, but, you know, some guys are going to just voice their opinion. That was Donovan's opinion. Uh, you got to realize Donovan's, a, you know, to some people's uh, estimates, a Hall of Fame quarterback, especially, you know, to himself, he believes he's a Hall of Fame guy, and his numbers definitely say it. Uh, so when you have a Hall of Fame quarterback come in there and clash with a Hall of Fame coach like Mike Shanahan, um, you know, it was pretty obvious uh, that they didn't get along. And uh, I can understand where he's coming from uh, when he says egos. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I just try not to look at it that negatively. Uh, you know, Mike Shanahan's a big uh, personality, a great coach, and Donovan was a great quarterback. Uh, they just didn't gel right. And uh, hopefully I can go in and be that great quarterback uh, that Coach Shanahan can coach, and uh, egos won't get in the way because we're all fighting for the same thing. All right, so I wanted to end by playing a little word association with you. Okay. All right, I'm going to say something. I'll just say the first thing that comes to mind. The retired player you think you're most like? Oh, man. Roger Staubach. You watched a lot of Roger Staubach videos as a kid, right? Roger the Dodger. There you go. <laughs> NFL draft? Um, dream catching, you know. First, you know, first chance that you get to, to be in the NFL. It's not making it in the NFL, but you actually made it to and you get a chance to be a professional athlete. So you're not chasing that dream anymore. You caught it. Now it's up to you to decide what you're going to do with it. Washington Redskins. Let's go. Ready to go. 
Um, ready to win, ready to play with a great defense. My champion. Super Bowls. <laughs> NFC East. Toughest. Some good quarterbacks in that division. Good yeah, defenses too. <laughs> <laughs> the future. Unlimited.